Hello there, welcome back. My name is Elena. And I'm Fotios, and this is the Game Court. And now that that's out of the way... What do you mean? You don't like my tie? <laughs> it's pretty unique. <laughs> yes, it plays music. <laughs> It's our turn to do our top 10 board games of all times. We had the three friends over, Rhys, Mark and Vangelis, and they presented their top 10 of all games times. Of all times, yes, of the times and times and times. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's our turn. Compared to last year, when we decided to do a joint top 30, this year we're going to do a separate top 10. I'm going to have 10 games and Fotis is going to present his top 10 board games of all times. So you get 20 games a day, potentially with a few crossovers, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe some honorable mentions of some sort, we'll see. We'll see. My number 10 is a game called Concordia, published by Mac Gertz in 2013. It's already a 10 year old game. Uh, it's a Euro game, it's a base Euro game. You have your map, you go around your map, you build buildings, you have actually explorers and ships, you go around the map, build buildings, I said that right, produce resources, there are five different resources in uh, Concordia, or six if you have the Venus expansion, they have the salt as well, which is the wild. And then you have a lot of resource management, but most importantly you have hand management. And the game is quite simple how it plays. You play a card, and you do what the card says. Very elegant, very simple game. You can get more cards, and the cards are not only your action cards, are also your scoring cards at the end of the game. What I like about this game is its simplicity and elegance, and the fact that you can explain this game to literally anybody, even if they're not familiar with board games. However, it's a very challenging game to master because how the scoring and the end of game scoring works, you have to uh, collect the appropriate number of cards in areas that you do very well, because that's the only way basically to win. Very nice game, even if it is an old Euro game, it's uh, one game in my heart. My number 10 is Adrian's Woe, and this game was published in 2021 by Garfield Games and designed by Bobby Hill. It's a very, very beautiful and complex flip and write. It's part of the X and Rides that we actually like quite a lot. Uh, and this happens to be my favorite because it probably has all the complexity. Uh, you are building a piece of the Hadrian's Wall that's up in Scotland, I think. And you are actually grow a population behind that wall. Uh, you're trying to flourish and you're trying to get all the merchants and all the clerics, a lot of performance, you know, satisfy overall the population. Also, you need to make sure that you don't get all the bad jujus attacking you. <laughs> the jujus. You need to make sure that you, <laughs> you get rid of them, otherwise they are going to get rid of you. Most thing I like about this game and the reason why it's at top 10 for me and not just a, an honourable mention, uh, this game has amazing combinations and um, you come with resources, people are resources as well, as well as extra resources like bricks. Uh, you manage to use all these people and resources in different combinations um, that will give you some more resources or some more shields and some more resources and some more people that will give you some different ones and you make so many combinations, you build buildings, you satisfy people, you build a wall, you do so many things in one round. It's, uh, Overall, the game says that you should play it simultaneously, mm -hmm. but play it, play, playing it player by player gives it so much satisfaction and this is why I like it so much. Number 10, Adrian's Wall. My number 9 is uh, Ultimate Railroads, which is basically a big box collection of uh, Russian railroads and American railroads and German railroads and Asian railroads, and Asian railroads all the railroads and all the expansions and the Automa, uh, the Automa function module, which I have never played by the way. Anyway, this game is at 2021, the big box, whereas the other games are older games, designed by Helmut Ochli and uh, Lonnie Orgler, and this game is uh, published by Hans Imglack. It's uh, a worker placement game, basically, where you fight for the best positions out to do the best stuff, to build or to lay tracks, to build your factories, to get uh, more workers potentially, to do other cool stuff around, but a lot of competition for these positions, and uh, at the end of every round, you have uh, a lot of income in points and uh, in, uh, in money and everything. It's a very, very nice game. It's a very satisfying game. The combos of this game are amazing. The variability of this game with the different modules, with the American, the Asian and everything is uh, superb. For me, this is, a, is basically four games in one box. So 
in my opinion, the Asian Reloads, for instance, is as different as to Russian Reloads, as is Brass Birmingham to Brass Lancashire. Completely different gameplay. I don't know, it's uh, very nice. It's one of my best work replacement games. I mean, if we had honorable mentions, I would probably mention this game. No, because, I mean, I like it very much, it's very nice, and especially the combos are super awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I have other games in. One downside of the game, though, I have to mention here, is its uh, setup time. It, it a lot of components, and again, with all the modules, you have to figure out which components you need to use. And setting up the game is uh, not a very small task. My number nine is so much better. My number nine... <laughs> <laughs> It is so much better. Like, sometimes you don't even realize how amazing the games in your collections are. And I particularly talk about the ones that you play all the time. Not necessarily the big, you know, super boxes, but I'm talking about the ones that you play all the time. So my number nine is Blocus. Blocus! I chose Blocus. <laughs> oh, come on, you knew that? <laughs> so I chose Blocus because Blocus is... Well, to begin with, let's let's start with the beginning. So, Blockus is a 2000 published game by Educational Insights and many, 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 many other publishers, uh, designed by Bernard Tavia Tavitian. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bernard Tavitian. I hope I'm not making uh, your name. Uh, I'm not butchering your name very much. This... Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm butchering it, right? <laughs> Uh, this game is a super duper game. We, I want to say we played it hundreds of times at, at least. It's a very fast game, plays up to play four player games, but the grid can be adjusted for two players, which makes it incredibly awesome. What you do is you place your polyomino tiles and everybody has exactly the same tiles. You have exactly the same number of tiles as well. You can place one piece at a time. And what you try to do is block your opponent. You can only attach the tiles uh, by touching corners. They cannot touch any other s surfaces apart from the corners. Um, and this is how you block your opponents. You can go around your opponent's pieces, uh, but you cannot touch your own pieces, only corner to corner. And this makes it very fast and very neat and very bitey, which I like very, very much. I think these are my kind of games. <laughs> and I don't think we've always we've ever played Blockus once and just left it. So I think it deserves recognition and obviously my number nine in my top 10 of all time games because we play it so much and it always gives us a lot of joy and happiness. I'd like to add three quick things. Three quick three. things? First of all... Normally quick is like <laughs> one. <laughs> first of all, you're extremely good in this game. I don't know how you do it, but you're extremely good. That's maybe, the first thing. Maybe I might be slightly biased, but you know... The second thing I would like to mention is I love when the components, you put them on the board and they click on the board. They do have yeah, this so little clicking thing, isn't it? Yeah. This tactile experience, which is very satisfying. And third of all, the name, Blocus. And every time we play and I block you, I say, I say, I say, I say, Blocus. I say Blocus. And then you block me, you say, Blocus. Blocus. And then I block again, I say, Blocus. I mean, obviously, it's not necessary for you to say Blocus, but does it add to the experience? Yes. I love it. At number eight, I have a weather machine which is a big, chunky, heavy, complex game designed by Vitalis Super Serda. duper, extra, Super listy, duper extra. Complex, yes. <laughs> Vitalis Serda, published by Eagle Griffon Games, is 2022, and it has amazing, amazing art by Ian O'Toole. Now, I think... You might be a bit is... of a fan. I am a bit, yeah. Of Ian O'Toole, yes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vitalis Serda as well, but yeah, Ian O'Toole is amazing. Anyway, in this game, you are basically an assistant of uh, Latif, the crazy scientist who made the original weather machine, which basically destroyed the world, <laughs> destroyed all the weather conditions around, and you're trying to build a new weather machine, a better weather machine, to fix the weather. And uh, to do so, you do work replacement again. Look at this, another work replacement game. Hmm. Yeah. But classical with Alaserda, you do a million stuff in your turn, a few things before your turn, several things in the middle of your turn, a few things after your turn, and um, there's a lot of stuff happening here. You get funding from the government, you do some experiments, you publish papers, you get a Nobel Prize, potentially, right? If you publish enough papers. That doesn't make you win the game, can I just say not that? Necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily. But it's a very, very nice game. Many people say that they don't get the theme. I'm, I work in academia and I get the theme 100%. I find it very satisfying. This circular feeling of Kanban, I also see it myself here. And uh, I like it very much. That's my number eight weather machine. My number eight, at number eight, 
there is a very beautiful complex game called and it's not ours i have to mention mm. oh the suspense the suspense yes so at number eight i chose feudum feudum is a 2018 board game published by odd bird games and designed by mark swanson you are part of this game as a medieval character. You roam toward the, towards the countryside where you try to tend farms, you try to um, tax the towns and take the outposts in effort to rise in power. Uh, Feudum is an economic medieval game uh, and it's a hand and resource management mainly. You have to manage your card that you program at the beginning of the round and that will dictate what actions you take for that round. Technically, it's a uh, fight for power over the guild. Mm. The more guilds you control, the better the outcome will be at the end, the more points you'll get. You can build feudums. Obviously, feudum is the name of the game. So obviously, <laughs> you can build feudums that will give you even more power and even more control. And the one that controls all the territories, the better, will win the game. What I like the most about this game and why it's in at number eight for me this game is so complex and it has so much to offer. Mm -hmm. There's so many different strategies behind this game. You are, you are always part of a chain because every guild feeds into the other. Mm -hmm. And if somebody doesn't, doesn't push from their guilds out so they produce, you, can, you always have the power to push them aside, take their guild, or become the pusher, or you can become the puller from the other side, from the other guild. So, it's always this connection in this game and there's so many things to explore you can travel you can build stuff you can feed the chicken as a <laughs> farmer you can you are you can go to war you, there's so many things that you can do in this game and i think for me it's an excellent war type game interesting that you mentioned about war because I think if you have a player on the table that controls guilds and he takes or she takes guilds actions and you let them to go, you know, wild with the guild actions, they're going to score a lot of points from that. And you have to go at war with them, you have to fight them, you have to take their guilds back, you have to, uh, you know, relinquish their power to get more points for yourself, obviously. So, the war aspect of the game, I think, it can appear in some games, but not in other games. And that's my number eight, Feudum. My number seven is another worker placement game. <laughs> I think there's a theme. <laughs> it's actually a very fresh game. It's uh, I think it's the only game in my list from 2023. It's Darwin's Journey from uh, Simone Luciani and Nesto de Magnone and published by Thundergriff Games. And as I said already, this is a work placement game, but what you do in this game, basically you follow Darwin and his fleet towards uh, exploration of Galapagos Islands, towards uh, discovering new species, new specimens, which you then deliver to the museum. But one of the coolest aspects of these games is how you uh, power up your workers using them these wax seals, because the more wax seals they have and the more different wax seals and combination of colors, they can do better and more powerful actions. And by the way, talking about actions, each one of these games that you take an action, then you take another five actions. You, you change your, combo, your combos very nicely. You also have some objective cards which give you potentially other additional actions and you end up having something along the lines of 250 points at the end of the game. It's a very satisfying game. We have the collector's edition, very nice components and everything. And uh, I highly recommend it if you haven't played it. Oh man, I want to change my top now. <laughs> really? I want to put Darwin's Journey as an amazing it's game. It's an amazing game. It's an, and it's so accurate, like you do some research on the animals, then you can write and do, like write in your journals and write letters and to write about your discoveries and stuff like that. You can do all these like amazing things, not just, you know, discover and then put it in a museum and so on and so forth. You do so many different, you know, with the travel as well. It's quite a lot. I really like it. It's an amazing game. And did we miss some other art of the game? Oh, the art uh, is one of my favorite. Yes. Why is this not in my top? <laughs> <laughs> because you have Blockus. Hey, hey. <laughs> Blockus. We probably played Blockus like a million gazillion mm. times more than I, we played Darwin's Journey. And I think that should say enough. My number seven this year uh, was present in the last top 30 million gazillion we did last time. But that was common. So I still have it in my top, but now it's at number seven. And I'm talking about Gaia Project. An amazing, beautiful space theme game designed by Jens Drogmuller, Helge Ostertag, published by Fewer Land Spiel. In this game, with very, 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 very many asymmetric 
characters, you select one of the factions, the million, very, 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 <laughs> very many, yeah, many <laughs> factions. Uh, you select a faction which you play for that game. Uh, you will try to colonize as many planets as you can and build beautiful federations with the buildings that you've built using satellites. Every single faction is very different, so they give you different powers, either not as strong or super strong powers. Everybody has the same buildings and everybody builds with the same resources. Uh, but what I like the most about this game is the difference that you have so many factions in there and all of them work so differently that every time you play with a different faction or even if you play with the same faction but somebody else plays with a different faction the game is very different, different. and I like that every time I play it Gaia does never feel like the same game I played last time although you have the same things that you have to do like colonize planets around it and build your federations which is fairly straightforward if you say it that way but Every faction gives you a different power, which means you play a different game, which I think it's super awesome. And it's a very long and, you know, brain-draining game, which I think is uh, well-deserving of number seven. I will add to the variability aspect that I just mentioned, in the sense that, you know, also the map is uh, modular, so the space, it's uh, have sectors you can combine in any different way, you can rotate them as well and stuff like that, but also you have objectives for each round which are different per game you have uh, two objectives for end of the game which are again different per game and you have the round boosters which are, they also are different, different. Yes. so apart from the 14 functions there are so many things that are done different in the game so the variability in this game is immense my number six is uh, Le Havre a game published by Lookout Games and designed by Uwe Rosberg uh, Le Havre is uh, an older economic game industry manufacturing game that we really really like. It features a lot of resources which are also dual phase so basically you have the wheat which translates to bread, you have the cows which can kill and get some meat and also some leather. Hide you mean? Yes, hide yeah. Uh, but Don't cheat, okay, don't turn it on okay. the other side. <laughs> so in the game on your turn you'll progress your boat and you'll rather collect resources from one sector or one section either all the wood or all the clay for instance or you'll visit a location, one of your buildings or one of your opponent's buildings by painting some coins or some food. So your turn is very super, super, super simple and the whole point of the game is to try to make this engine that you convert your resources to money because money is points, so you don't get loans, so you are able to feed your population at the end of every round and in a two-player game you have how many? 14 rounds and every time you have to feed and this and it's Painful. more and more every single round. And you have to get these ships that give you some free food. I don't know how. Maybe they are cruise ships and they give you the free catering, the, you know, the whole package. <laughs> so they give you some free food, the ships, somehow. I guess with the trade. Uh, but this game is, uh, you know, so easy to teach to somebody. But uh, it has so many cards, so many special buildings, different buildings. It comes with two decks, the game. We have never played, we have never touched the yellow, the yellow deck of cards with special buildings. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's such a good game. We really enjoy it every time. A bit punishing, I would say. A bit. Mm -hmm. We have actually played Le Havre in four recently. Yeah. It was a game that we would normally play in two, and it's incredibly punishing in two. And then I said I would not play this game in four because you tend to get one or two actions maximum per per row, yeah, per, per round, per yes. round, which is incredibly mm. painful. Actually, it wasn't as painful in four as it was in two, I don't I got three loans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know how to play the game. <clears throat> uh, well, it, a challenge is a challenge. But I think, yes, this game, if you like, you know, paying a lot of food and managing your resources and, you know, not knowing what to do until the end of the game, then that's the game for you. I would add it into my into my collection, but I only have ten spaces. I already have a very punishing game. Did they say you chose Blocos? Hey, Blocos is an amazing game. <laughs> My number six is Azul, and I'm talking about the original Azul, uh, the normal Azul. I know it I know it as normal Azul, I don't even know. Every other Azul has another name, I don't think this one has a name. Some pavilion or Queen's Garden. Yeah, no, yes. just a normal, just Azul, plain Azul. That's my number six. It comes in a mini version as well. This is uh, the version I'm talking about, is a normal Azul with the normal version, uh, published in 2017. Designed by Michael Kiesling and published by Next Move Games. This is a very abstract game 
where you have some beautiful tiles on a board where you have to place them either in a specific pattern by collecting different tile numbers of tiles and placing them in your pattern or creating a pattern without them actually touching or matching on any rows or columns. You score points as you go and you might score some points at the end. Um, I think you can play it up to four people but we normally tend to play it in two. Mm. The reason why this game, I like this game so much and this game takes number six instead of for example the Havre is because we get this game in almost every holiday we go into. Especially with a mini edition now. The mini edition is so easy to carry everywhere. They're all windproof, waterproof, the whole mm. proof. They're so enjoyable and so relaxing to play. You can play in an aggressive way, specifically at oh, two yes, players. It's, very good. it's so bitey if you want to make it bitey or just relaxing and very not care tech. about anything. Very it's such that. a versatile, mm. versatile game. Mm. I like it so much and we play it so much and I think it needs some recognition because it's an amazing game. I have played uh, most of the Azul games, and this is by far my favorite, most of the Azul editions or versions, however, mm -hmm. but this is by far my, my favorite one. It's very nice, elegant, it's, it's a modern classic, as people say it nowadays, right? It's a modern classic. My number five, it's our first crossover, it's your number seven, it's a Gaia project, and because it's a fantastic game, it's higher on my list. <laughs> Please. You you basically said everything I want to say. I would like to say one more thing. I like what I like really about this game is how at every round of the six rounds, it's very it feels very short by the way. It's a long game but it feels very short. But in every of the six rounds you try to squeeze this extra credit or this extra ore to do this one more build one more building or to do one more thing. You try to do that, you try to squeeze to go one step further than your, than your opponents. And it feels so good. An expansion for Gaia was recently released and this adds a few more things in the game, a couple of more factions. That sounds really awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm not particularly keen on it. I'm not sure how these new functions will be balanced against all other functions in terms of terraforming the different planets. I have to check it more to be honest with you. And also there's so many, so there's so many factions in the base game anyway that I don't really think I'm missing two more functions, I don't know. My number five is a finally a worker placement game for me. Although it's I really your like or your first worker placement game. Yeah. Games. Mm. Although I really like worker placement games, I think this is my first for whatever reason. Anyhow, my number five is Underwater Cities, mm. published Amazing. by Delicious Games and designed by Vladimir Suchi. In this beautiful worker placement game, you try to develop future cities on the seafloor through politics, production, and science. Apart from placing your workers onto uh, three different colored actions mm. that you have. You're going to have to manage your hand as well, where you actually get quite quite a f through quite a few cards mm -hmm. throughout the game. They they decided to do this like very brilliant thing where they divide the cards into three decks. And I think this is what catches my eye the most in regards to this game, because the deck is actually divided in three decks. Mm -hmm. So you will have the simplest cards at the beginning and they get more complex as the game goes and the requirement is uh, higher. And I think that by doing this, I think this little trick made the game very interesting to me and I feel that the cards are easier to manage. Also, the game has a few production rounds, so every few rounds you'll get a production round oh, where you'll so produce good. from <laughs> all your cities if they do produce. And I feel that, you know, how we normally do it is I will just hold my hands out Both and, of then, them. <laughs> and then Photius is just going to put yes. into my hands everything my city produces because we'll go through it together and then it's so bountiful and you have so much, well it feels like you have so much, like round number two you probably have nothing left <laughs> but you know you build this engine of you build your cities with tunnels and you build your cities with different farms and they produce different things. All the buildings that you, you build in there produce different things. The way you produce them, the way you build them, they will score more for later. You have your own objective on your objectives on your board, uh, which I think gives it a different taste every time you play it. But overall though, like the cards in the production every so often do make this game an absolutely incredible game. 
it's a fantastic engine builder and uh, I prefer underwater cities compared to let's say Terraforming Mars or Ark Nova. I mean we've tried, Yes. at least I've tried Terraforming Mars and I feel that the cards are so chaotic that my hands clatter at the beginning and then I have no, absolutely no clue what I'm doing anymore. And this is the thing, the thing that you mentioned that the cards are divided in three decks so in Terraforming Mars or Ark Nova you may get a card that you cannot really build right now very early, very early in the game or you cannot, because of the deck is so deep, you can't really find the card that you need. Mm -hmm. Whereas Underwater Cities, the way it works, it allows for these synergies between the cards to shine. And that's that's very, th this feels very satisfying. My number four is Imperial Steam, a game designed by Alexander Humer, published in 2021 by Capstone Games. And this is potentially one of the most punishing games in our collection, I would say. Every time you struggle for resources, resources are always scarce in this game. It's amazingly how you cannot have anything done, <laughs> but also at the same time it's so satisfying that it feels so fulfilling. You, What you do in this game, you are trying to develop your railroad to basically reach Trieste, and the first person to reach Trieste also gets some perks. And also reaching Trieste is the end of a game condition. Uh, so the game at that round will end, basically. You develop your network, you build factories which will uh, produce some resources, iron, wood, uh, coal and stone, which then you're going to use to build more rails, or maybe you're going to deliver to the market to get some money, because again, money is points. And you have this cool element in this game about investors. So as you uh, get some contracts, you also get the investors, and you can increase your uh, your share value, the value of your company, and then you can sell these shares to the investors. But every time you sell a share to the investor, you may get good pocket money, but you're going to lose 10% of the end of game scoring. So if you sell 10 of these shares to your investors, you may end, end up with basically zero points. It's a very tight game. It has a bit of a, a problem with a catch the leader element, I would say. So once a person has the engine rolling and has connected to a market where they can deliver cubes, I think it's quite hard to catch them. But still, it's a very nice game. It's a very puzzle game. Very nice variable setup and different tiles for uh, two players or three players or four players. So it scales well also in different player counts. And uh, I really love this game. My number four is a game that we've played fairly recently mm -hmm. and we've not, we've only played it once and I think we are in the process of actually making our own game because this is quite an old game. Yes. My number four is Container and this is quite an amazing game and for people that have not played it, apparently it's not very easy to find or you cannot find it at all. Uh, we are building our own game now, we're just printing our own materials and, you know, cutting and doing all of that. Mm -hmm. So we have the game too. I think it was a print and play version at one point of the game. This is a 2007 game designed by Franz Benno de Long and Thomas Ewart, published by, by Valley Games, where players drive prices as they produce and ship goods in the economic simulation. So technically what you do, everybody has a little, very little board. You have your own container ship and you, firstly you build factories that produce containers of that sort, mm -hmm. which I don't even know if they're actually, they have a product, is there just colors? Five colors, five different yes, colors. five different yes. colors, that's is as simple matter. as it comes. Yeah. The containers that you produce are bought by somebody else that's going to put them on their market to sell at a different price and you with your container ship are able to move across mm. so the the people sit around the table there is a main board um, that is actually just an island represents an island and nothing else where people can go and bid with their container ships over there but ultimately the rest of the, sh the table creates the open sea where your boat is going to move into from a player to another. You can go on dock in somebody's mm -hmm. harbor and you can buy from them whatever you need to buy from them. You can obviously produce containers of different colors as per your factories and sell them on if you want to sell them on. There's competition obviously in between whomever creates more and whoever buys and sells more. It's all about buying and selling and whenever you feel like your container has enough containers, your container ship has enough containers, you can go to the island in the middle and go for bidding and obviously option, yes. obviously, whomever wants to bid. There is an option where you can either sell the containers to the person that pays the most or you can pay the same amount to the bank and you get the containers. Yeah, but if you accept the highest bid, you get also 
much in contribution. If yeah, if you are to sell, for example, mm. and you can you sell the containers to one of the opponents instead of keeping them from use for yourself, you get the same contribution from the bank. So mm. 20 becomes 40, which I think it's very bountiful. But again, if you need those containers, you might want to, you know, spend some cash. What I like about this game is it sounds like a fairly simple simulation game, like economic simulation game. Mm. Um, but apart from all the buying and the selling and the producing, every container, every pl player gets a little like a crib sheet, a little card yes, yes, that yes. tells them exactly what the, those containers mean for them in prices. So a contain, a Norwich container might be 10 for me or might be 4 for 40 or so. Mm -hmm. So every price is different for every player. So they might collect different containers depending on what their card says. Containers are a raw economic game. It's uh, an old game. I think the simplicity of the game and the fact that it has no kafafel around it is what makes it so good and mm. so satisfying. I think it's the idea of if you build a good good enough engine to get yourself going, you have very strong chances of winning. Also, if you do not build a proper engine and you get yourself stuck somehow because you know, you can get yourself stuck. There's no mitigation there. There is no way of, you know, catching up. There's <laughs> no way of you get yourself in a swirl and that is you spinning for the rest of the game nothing is going to help you which i think you know i like this kind of you know action reaction kind of game where you know if it is to be punished it's punished and it really suits me very much so that's my number five four <laughs> <laughs> my next game is another game designed by simona luciani this time co-designed by tomaso <laughs> batista and this uh, barras a 2019 release of uh, cranio creation games and uh, this game was uh, suggested uh, by one of you guys. Thank you so much. It's uh, actually a pretty good game. I haven't played it before this year. We have played now a few times mm -hmm. and they have ordered also, have kickstarted back to this uh, two player only map, the official one. It's a game about producing energy using your dams. It's a worker placement game. So you go to different locations so you can build your dams so you can uh, collect contracts. But also it's a wonderful resource management game because whenever you want to build let's say a part of your dam then you have to basically allocate some resources which you don't really use them but you don't have them available for a determined amount of yeah, time yeah you put them in a wheel so and then way, they exactly you use the machinery it's more like using the machinery and it really represents time yeah. rather than anything it's like else committing the machinery yep. to building the, i think that's really it, clever yeah it's very clever and uh, also you have to the competition around the map where you, you have to collect the water to use the water for energy production, maybe using your own turbines or your opponent's turbines and have to, to uh, pay them if you want to use them. Um, it's a super duper game, it's another complex heavy game, but what I really like about this game is uh, how the theme blends very well with the mechanics, because how the water flows is very natural. So it's something that works very well with the network building that you're doing, which is different than the network building of other economic manufacturing games where you basically connect most likely trains or canals around the map. In this game you try to control the water so you can produce the most energy possible. I have to say I'm pretty bad at this game. I barely <laughs> ever win but I find it so satisfying, so enjoyable and uh, I think it will be one of my top games for a good while. It is a very, very good game and I'm sad that I don't have it in my top 10. I feel that if we would just put all the games that we play all the time, I think my top 10 would just be as... as well, yeah. like, it looks exactly like yours exactly. and I'm just trying to, you know... There are many, many beautiful games that we don't give credit to and I feel that, you know, this is an amazing game and obviously it's top, what, 8 mm -hmm. in BGG? So it's obviously an amazing game. It's a beautiful game and I wish I had space for it too, but it's nonetheless it's still an amazing game. One thing I want to say about this game additionally is that uh, the game comes with uh, several asymmetric characters. So again, you have this uh, asymmetry in the game, you have your own power and we like asymmetry in games. We like have our own faction, which gives you a bit of more flavor. So you try to uh, basically build your strategy around your power. Character, yeah. Yes. Uh, and you have also the engineer as well, which also gives you a different perk every every time. So the combination of your character and engineer can create a lot of possibilities of uh, variable gameplay. At my number three, 
It's another crossover and it's finally from my side a crossover. Mm -hmm. My number three is Imperial Steam and I chose this game. I'm not going to go through all these people again because we've already spoken about it a moment ago. Alexander Humor? Alexander Humor? Yeah. Does that make you yeah, happy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've already spoken about this game which is an absolutely punishing and challenging game and again I feel that it's just as ruthless as you know if you if you make a mistake that That's is it. you for the game. That's it. Building even the smallest thing like a poor rail, it's mm. just so hard to do in that game. So everything, even if you manage to just do something as simple as delivering something, mm. it feels so satisfying because you know how much and how how much effort you've put in it and how long it took you to do all of that. And you're right, you know, somebody can monopolize on one of the markets, but equally you have to be clever enough in these, this kind of game, mm. these kind of games that you need to, if you, your opponent goes one way, you'll need to find a strategy around, completely around your op your opponent. So you can manage to do something, otherwise you will just end up losing from the beginning of the game, which is very punishing. And if you do manage to get to Trieste, make sure that you don't tell your opponent that the next round you're going to Trieste because he's going to steal your move. And I lost the game at that point as well. It was very painful. Also, investors are a very, 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 very good thing to use if you know how to use them properly. Although they give you a ginormous chunk of money, it's going to cost you a lot at the end because 10% is a lot of money. So if unless you know what to do with that money, don't take it. My number two is nothing else but Brass Birmingham, which is... That was your is, number one last time. It is. It was my number one. Yes, I have a new number one. <laughs> my number two is <laughs> Brass Birmingham. It's uh, the best board game uh, of all times, according to BGG. It's number one based on votes across all over the world. But for me, it's number two. <laughs> it's uh, based on the old brass that was designed by... Uh, Martin Wallace and this uh, particular Brass Birmingham is co-designed with uh, Gavin uh, Brown and Matt Tolman and this uh, new edition, which is by the way wonderful, is published by Roxley Games. And it's another game about industry manufacturing, pure economic game of de developing your network and building, building your industries, coal, iron, Canals, yes, rails. cotton mills, uh, potteries and uh, basically utilizing your industries to the potential like using their coal or iron or selling them for profit for income and points and also for points when it comes to links with your network. It's a hand management game in the sense that you have to spend cards to do the actions. In most of the cases you don't need to match any card with the action you do but if you want to build you have to be careful to keep the cards you need to build out that match the locations that you need to develop or build. Uh, it's a very clever game. It has uh, basically four resources, coal, iron, money and beer. And beer is a very powerful resource because it's the only way or usually the only way that you can sell industries. And uh, it feels uh, so streamlined, so complete. It is kind of punishing. Again, we like punishing games. I think it's in our blood. <laughs> I mean, we don't have enough punishment for work, so we come back home after work and we'll say, and play well, let's, let's play a punishing game. <laughs> uh, but we like being uh, it, it on each other's face, and um, I don't know, it, the game is just super satisfying. The other edition, the Brass Lancashire, is also a very, very good game. I prefer slightly more Brass Birmingham, I have to say, but uh, yeah, the Brass Bra Lancashire is also a very, very good game. At number two, for me this time and I wanted it to make it number two in the last stop as well. well we couldn't because I think you wanted something else so now I can make it my number two because this is what I actually wanted for god knows how long maybe since last year but you know <laughs> for god knows how long it was a long period mm -hmm. at number two for me is Maracaibo Maracaibo is a game designed by Alexander Pfister and published by Games Up this is a one to four player game you're a seafarer and you're trying to uh, journey to obtain wealth and fame in the 17th century around the Caribbean. This absolutely stunning rondelle hand management game, mm. I should call it, because I think this is like many what you do, you go in a rondelle way, in a rondelle fashion with your little boatie and you manage your hands, um, either by discarding things because the cards are multi-use 
or go around with your booty and try to either fight joining one of the nations you can fight the natives in there i think that's a bit of an as long as i think you don't read too much into the theme i mm. think the game is absolutely incredible and i think it plays very very well too um you try to sail around and you have an option to upgrade your boat which gives you a lot of different perks particularly when you deliver stuff um you build a tableau of people that will help you throughout mm -hmm. your journey will give you a lot of points and also you want to get up on one of the tr at least one of the tracks of the nations and you do that by helping them in their fights with the natives the game comes with a campaign mode as well which you can freely play if you want or you don't have to play if you don't want to the game plays just as well some elements do change during the campaign but the game is beautiful without it i think we played it for quite a long time without the campaign and then we started doing the campaign as well i don't think i can find a fault in this game apart from when i lose but I think this is one of well, the best games, obviously, is number two, so this should be one better than it, than it. But this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite games of all times. And I think the way you can dictate the speed of the game, yeah. either you or your opponent, so the game can be incredibly fast, or the game can be taken slower and you can go and, and get more actions. It's very interesting. It depends on how your opponent plays. You'll just have to react to that or act beforehand. Uh, you can speed up the game or slow down and you know take your time and do whatever you need to do. Overall, it's an incredible game. Uh, obviously, these games that we present you here today, we both of them love them. Even if this is number two, Elena's favorite game, it is one of my favorite games as well. It's not on my, not on my top 10 list, but I really love this game. We really like the other Alexander Fister game, Great Ocean Trail, quite a lot, but I think both of us prefer Maracaibo better. It's a pretty cool game, pretty unique game. The multi use cards, as you say, they're quite cool in this game. My number one, the new king of board games for me, <laughs> <laughs> is? is Carnegie. It's a game published in 2021, designed by Javier George and published by Queen Games. It's another game that features the amazing art by Ian O'Toole. It's again an industry manufacturing game, but it's a, a quite different game when it comes to the how the actions work in this game. You're basically Carnegie and you try to develop your own company, build different departments and expand uh, the network around uh, the US. USA, yes, and they build different industries and do some projects, manufacturing projects or housing projects, but also do some uh, donations to get more points by spending your money in donations. Um, now, the key uh, mechanic of the game here is this action selection, and there are exactly 20 rounds in the game, and the current player, the active player, will choose an action, but everybody is going to do the same action. So choosing the right action the same at the right time is key to this game, so basically you can do an action that is Maybe not the best for me, but it's even worse for my for opponents. Yeah. <laughs> so then, that. basically, when the other players' uh, turn come, they, can, they are forced to do the action that I originally wanted to do because, you know, this is what they were prepared to do anyway. It's a pretty good game. There are only four actions in this game. There's uh, the human resources action, which you can uh, reallocate your workers in your personal board. You have the administration action, which basically gives you goods and money, cubes and money. You have the research action where you can develop your projects or improve in the research tracks in the tracks around the map. And then you have also the building action, the manufacturing action, or building the projects action, how it's called. Anyway, and you send your uh, people to missions as well, and then you have to retrieve them, and by retrieving them you get income. It's such a cool game. Timing is very important. It scales extremely well, it plays very well from solo up to four players. There is no downtime because of this simultaneous, uh, not simultaneous, the action that you select, I will do as well. There is no really downtime. It's a fantastic game. That's my number one for this year, Carnegie. It is quite a fantastic game, I cannot lie. It's a, again, we really like playing these games together, but I, my top will not have the same games as his. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to keep our opinions to ourselves yes. and, you know, say whatever we want to say and rather than just combine them. Exactly. There there's still so many yeah. games. But Carnegie particularly plays very, very well. And I like the donation aspect of it because I think Carnegie was not the bestest boss, I should say. <laughs> yes. So he kind of felt a bit guilty, so he started doing donations. But I like the accuracy behind it. Also, I like when you develop when you develop one of your industries, you can you pull out like these little tabs mm -hmm. and you can pull out as many as you develop or as many as you have 
points the develop really um, and they just pull out and they give you different benefits and that's where you get your discs to actually place them on the map and the action selection is just super super, super sneaky yeah. super sneaky because you can see that other people prepare for it and with one single strike you get all of them off which is very painful because they cannot do exactly what they wanted to do and they have to do it at a reduced cost which is painful but all in all a sneaky beautiful economic game if you haven't played carnegie please give it a try it's an amazing game uh, quite different from whatever else i have played personally so yeah uh, if you haven't played it give it a try give it a try yes yeah. And we've come to the end of this video. Come on, you still have your number one. I know, but my number one is probably very easy to guess because I am a sucker and it's very hard for me to change my first top. And it stayed as, you know, luckily it's the same as last year and it's the same as everybody else around. So my number one is Brass Birmingham. And Brass Birmingham is my number one because again, it's the most streamlined version of, econo of an economic game that we have played so far and I still enjoy it just as much now and the sneakiness behind it with the cards that you can select and you can play no matter how you want to do it you can take advantage of other people's networks you can uh, sneakily develop to a point where you can build for the next era you can build a level two or three building so you know you will keep it strategically in a place for later so the more you pl we play this game the more I realized different ins and different outs of it. Obviously there are a lot of people saying that building around Birmingham or in Birmingham and around Birmingham will give you the most points, which is true. Yeah. But does that actually beat the pottery barns? Pottery, you mean? Pottery barns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is true. If you go very strong in one of the industries, especially the potteries, you're going to get many, many, many points. I think the same is true for the cotton mills, I want to say. Um, I haven't been yet able to, my, m myself at least, to win with going strong in the manufactured goods industries, but I would really like to try that at some point. As but well. I remember at one point we played, and, and Fotius played mainly like iron and coal, like nothing. I don't know whether I just played significantly bad at that point, but you won that way and I didn't win, I didn't win and it was very painful. Yes. But the game has so many ins and so many outs and so many things to offer. And you know, some people are not particularly fans of the beer, but I really like it and I still don't understand what the beer means, but I still find that this is the most stream, streamlined economic version of a game that we have played so far, so that's why it's number one. So that was our top 10, separate top 10s uh, this year top 10 game of all times for Elena and myself. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And see you next time. Bye. Bye.